Hello all, Yankee Farm Wife here. And I only have one question today, but two words of the day. First word of the day, oligarchy. Now, that's a small group of people having control of a country, organization, or institution. You'll need to remember that for later on. Second word of the day, short and sweet, cult. A system of religious veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure or object such as the cult of St. Ola or the cult of Trump. It's also a misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. Well, here we go. Much like the fact that I am not a psychiatrist, I only play one on YouTube, I am also not an historian or an economist. I am just a Yankee farm wife with more curiosity than a two-year-old. I spend a lot of time reading, trying to answer the constant echo in my head of the question, why, 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 why? I don't know, but here we are. So the question of the day is this, how did we get to this point and what can we do about it? I will try to keep this short and simple, not because I don't think you'll understand the premises, but because I'm old and I don't know how long I will live. And I'd like to squeeze in a half hour of yoga today. So the reason we are a divided mess today is, drum roll please, money. Greed and money, and the need to control people and divide them so they are too busy fighting amongst themselves to notice we are being robbed blind. Here we go. I'm gonna hang with me for a few minutes because we're dealing with an abscess in Chili's foot. Um, so we're soaking right now and here we go. We will, we will talk and work at the same time. We start with a quick synopsis of Donald Trump's childhood. Well documented pretty much everywhere. He had a mean, cold, racist slumlord father who amassed much of his fortune by renting hell holes to poor people. His mother was ill for a long time when he was very young and he suffered from a lack of affection. Not you, Teddy. <sighs> he was sent to military school where he learned to work the system and hone his bullying skills to perfection as well as his proficiency at conning people which is how he covered his bullying ass. Had he not inherited a fortune from his father, he most likely would have spent his life selling used cars in the suburbs of Hoboken, fighting multiple negative reviews on the Better Business Bureau's listing and struggling with child support payments. Let it try. <sighs> no. Following a career of spending money and bankrupting businesses that were often financed by Russian establishments and the very shady Deutsche Bank, he landed a TV show where he got paid to bully people. If that show had not been headed for the manure pile of canceled shows, he would never have run for president, which it is also well documented was a publicity stunt to get his ratings up and save himself from financial ruin. If that were the sum total, we still wouldn't be where we are today. But Trump has a deep admiration for big bullies, especially Vladimir Putin. And while he doesn't study or read anything more complex than a menu, and possibly the English translation of Hitler's speeches, which he kept on his nightstand for a few years, but he often used some big words, so it could have been just for show or to intimidate the domestic staff. But he does have a knack for picking up the best bullying techniques. So much like a dog attracts fleas or mange, Trump learned all of Putin's tricks by osmosis, so to speak. Let's take a quick trip through oligarchy, where basically a small group of people, generally rotund white men, hold the vast majority of the wealth of a country, see Russia, and kowtow to the ruler of that country, who kowtows to them in return to make sure they stay filthy rich and they all live lives of great luxury, unless the oligarch betrays the, <laughs> betrays the ruler in some way. And the next thing you know, he falls out a window. So very many poorly made windows in Russia. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad there's no window next to me, Chile. There it is, drawing salve. The horse people watching will say, yeah, all the horse people will say, how could you kneel down? You can't get away if something dumb happens. Put your foot down, put your foot down, put your foot down. But I trust my chili pepper. We've been together since he was a little baby. All right, diapers, all the rage in the horse world. Now, we visit the cult part of today's lesson. In particular, the cult of personality. In Russia, 
Putin holds this position and anyone who tries to take over, well, consider a man named Prigozhin who marched on Moscow, then surrendered, apologized and groveled and was publicly forgiven, kinda, until his plane crashed two months later. Oops, <laughs> Putin didn't even pretend it wasn't him. Okay, are we still taping? Yeah. Putin groomed the people of Russia to believe everything he told them, regardless of how far-fetched it might actually have been. The classic line, believe what I tell you, not what you see or read, is the tagline of his reality TV series pitch. It runs so deep that when Putin invaded Ukraine, he justified the murder of, at this point, well over 10,000 civilians, many of them children and infants. By saying the country was run by and populated with Nazis, there are videos of Russian residents in Ukraine on the phone with their parents in Russia, trying to convince them that there are no Nazis in Ukraine. We live here, they say. We've never met one. It's all a lie. And the parents vehemently argue with the children that they are wrong. Perhaps they live like rats in the sewers, but Putin says they are there. So watch out for the Nazis. These parents are more worried their children will be killed by imaginary Nazis then by one of the missiles dropped onto their neighborhood nursery school. And the adult children, their faces. You know when you are playing fetch with a dog and you fake throw it and hide the ball behind your back? And the poor dog has that tilted head, stricken look in their eyes and the ball has disappeared and it's what these kids look like going, Mama? Papa? Where, where did you go? I don't see you. Which brings us to our own special cult of personality in our country, formerly known as the United States. We all know we are just as divided now as we were during the Civil War. Only it's not north against the south, but the right against the left. And our would-be used car salesman of a former president has used all the same tactics that Putin used before him to create a cult of personality that seemingly can't get broken. It doesn't matter if it makes no sense. If Trump says it, it must be true. So those who have fallen under a spell believe that immigrants are taking their jobs even though we have more unfilled positions than available labor in this country. He shouts at a debate that illegals are taking black jobs. They are stealing black jobs from you. And I still need to know, what are black jobs? I love this phrase, black jobs. It tells a lot about the man and about his character. Folks, I know what a black job is. It's a vice president of the United States. I know what a black job is. The first black president in American history, Barack Obama. She's not only a great vice president, she could be president of the United States. But Trump's base, mostly working class whites, pump their fists in the air and chant for black jobs as if they actually give a flying ferret fart about them. Donnie, there's a reason you've been called down the con for decades. I may be just a meemaw, but I have some clout. Santa is a dear friend of mine. I have his cell number and I am not afraid to use it. Ask my children and grandchildren. Is your festival of lies worth the price? No. In any case, your chorus of believe me, believe me has taken its toll, coupled with cries of high gas prices and sex offender immigrants who apparently would have to work very hard to keep up with our former president. And we are now neatly, and it would seem, irreversibly divided into cult members and baffled dogs, heads tilted, wondering what happened to their own friends and families. Right, Ernie? A friend of mine told me her cousin, when asked how she could believe any of Trump's lies, responded, what does it matter anymore if it's true or a lie? It's all the same. And I tilted my head, as did my friend, and our heads started back and forth as if we were looking for the missing ball. And so the only solution, of course, is to convince an impressionable young child to climb to the top of a building and shoot Trump during a rally, right? No, not right. This isn't Russia yet. We don't push people up against defective windows or poison them or take down their planes much. As long as Trump doesn't get into office again and carry out his plans for revenge against freaking everyone while taking over the judicial branch of the government and putting us into camps or deporting us, British Columbia please, we still have the right to vote. And while Trump has 30% or so of the country convinced that our elections are rigged, we have the safest, most secure system in the entire freaking world. Even the Republicans who ran the elections in the red and purple states agree. 
Joe Biden won by a lot. Now I know there are thousands of people with bunkers on their properties filled with guns, ammo, and canned baked beans preparing for the coming revolution. Many of them see themselves as John or Sarah Connor taking on Arnold Schwarzenegger crouched behind a pile of burning tires while dirty children dressed in rags eat scraps of moldy bread as their emaciated mother grills rats on a spit over a small garbage fire. But that's not the scenario we're looking at, is it, Crunch? No, it's not. Okay, okay. We'll explain it. If Trump is elected again, knowing what he now knows and with his puppet Supreme Court in his pocket and Project 2025 available in paperback form, we are looking at an immediate future that will be much resembling Russia. The obscenely wealthy will grow even more obscene. They will pander to Trump, who will lower their taxes to the point where the government will be able to buy a gumball or two with the revenue. We will pay the rest. Trump will pander back by deregulating everything so his friends can make even more money. The environment will be destroyed. Climate will get warmer. Important animal species will die out. Workers will lose their bargaining power and their overtime. Education will suffer dramatically. Books banned, history will be re- Oh, wait. A lot of this is already happening residually from Trump's first presidency when he granted permission for this regression. <sighs> And we will always have two camps, the right and the left, hating each other, no matter how eloquently Melania begs for unity. Oh, and I am impressed with whomever has been her most recent English as a second language tutor, because judging from the letter she just wrote, she's now a candidate to be a Rhodes Scholar. I, I had to look up a few of the words she used. We have a few solutions. We can force everyone on the right to move to Florida and Texas and let them secede from the union. That might be entertaining for a while. But I have friends and family in both states, so maybe not. In the end, no one really knows who in Russia is more powerful, the oligarchy or Putin. Putin, however, is very clever and has shoddy building codes and workmanship on his side. Trump is driven by instinct, not intelligence, and is easily impressed and manipulated by power and money. Does not bode well for him or us, as he is also very old and will probably die shortly after our democracy is disassembled, leaving our country to be run by the Heritage Foundation or worse the CEO of Walmart or Hobby Lobby. Get ready to stand in line and be fitted for your red robes. But I digress, back to the assassination attempt where we all wonder why the bullet couldn't have gone two inches further to the right. You know I know who you are. Now, I believe it didn't because that's not how we are meant to save ourselves from a looming apocalypse. Trump being taken out by a kid with a gun isn't a good enough solution for America. We are so much better than that. The United States of America has triumphed over evil using more rational means. Trump needs to be taken out by education, ingenuity, perseverance, a greater focus on mental health, unity on the left, and a deep commitment to our constitution. All of us behind our leader. And when I say that, I am looking at you, the so-called liberal press, including MSNBC and CNN. Damn it, but you should be ashamed of yourselves. And George Clooney, you let Trump get into your head. I don't care how cute you are. I am going to have to ground you from technology for a full week. Close the laptop right now. Knuck in thoughts, all of you. Bad, bad press. The answer, America, is that Trump needs to be taken out at the polls, period. That's when we can be proud of ourselves. That's a satisfying conclusion. Don't lower yourselves to violence. We don't need to become the bullies to save our country. We need to become patriots, the real kind. Not the ones with the red hats who dry hump cardboard cutouts of their hero. Well, Diane always has them in the <laughs> But if all of this logic and reason wasn't enough to convince you, remember, Santa, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, patriot? Sincerely, the Yankee farm wife. <laughs> and Patch and Leo.